Hey, Capricorn. You see that Mars in Pisces? Yeah, that Mars in Pisces in your third house. Third house has to do with your neighborhood, your local environment. So, in the time when there is protests and who knows what else is going on, um, as well as the coronavirus, whatever you think about that, there is some sort of, I would say, threat or danger in your local environment. And I would say to use caution, I mean, you don't want to be one of these people who's just walking down the sidewalk and catches a rubber bullet where you, just out of nowhere as an innocent bystander. You know, like, you got to be careful um, because the... Six, the squares happen between the third and the sixth, which the sixth has to do with health as well as, you know, a- attackers or conflicts or things like that. And so there's some definite press- tension between the your personal health and your your neighborhood surroundings. So be careful of that. And it culminates with something in the 10th house which if you oh, hold on culminating in the to the 10th house with the 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 cancer eclipse here um that's uh, sorry what am i saying not the 10th house the 7th house so the <laughs> it's i mean whether that's going to be lighting off something with to do with relationships or whether you know you're going to have a sworn enemy or something like that i mean you know that's up for interpretation but primarily i think one thing to look out for is um yeah your own physical health is going to be an issue the next few days um and so look make sure you're you're taking care of yourself with self-care and that kind of thing um it, if it's not if it's not like you know, attacks from protests or chaos in the streets or, or you know, coronavirus infections. It, another thing the sixth house has to do with is like manual work and labor and stuff like that. So it's basically like to make sure you're not like, you know, working the grind too hard and doing yourself in that way either, right? These are all things to just make sure you're you're well cared for and supported and you're not putting yourself at too much of a risk in these various areas that's what i'm doing through astrology let's see what tarot has to say about it as well the magician oh well i think the magician reminds us i mean as i talk about the astrology and some of these transits which have influence over us the magician is kind of about you know taking your own personal authority about what it is you're manifesting and the role you're playing and being a kind of a conscious co-creator in the whole process rather than just kind of going along um, blindly about it like you're 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 contributing your own creative dynamic into the mix and just a reminder to please um, do so in a way that is conscientious and uh, not self-destructive. Or, you know, whether we're collectively self-destructive or personally self-destructive, you know, we're, we want to be manifesting things that are beneficial to our all parties involved in the long run here. Um, okay, switching back to this part here what the fuck's going on here no this is not <laughs> what i want to do okay so uh, wrong wrong thing there i'm going back now to we're going to move on to aquarius so aquarius where is mars in pisces for you is in the second mhm and the second Squaring the fifth. I should know all about this because I've got a similar square in my chart between the second and the fifth. This is all. This is just getting messed up now. No, we don't want to go by month. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm not at my best today. <laughs> I'm just. This is. I'm trying to make through this 
you know, it's a difficult, it's an intense period of time. I'm just trying to do these kinds of things, continue to keep up my astrology practices as the world seems to be falling apart. Um, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I'm just being dramatic, but it lo looks like it's not very encouraging to look at the news right now, I find. Um, so in Mars, Mars in the second, it's your, your house to do with wealth and finances, Aquarius. Um, so there could be, I'm thinking with like Pisces, it's sort of like the fishes in the water. It sort of is like, makes me think of like springing a leak or something, right? Cause Mars is like that puncturing Mars is like the sword, right? It's like, it's, there's some sort of injury or something with Mars and it's like a leak in the, in the Neptune Pisces fish tank. And now it's sprung a leak and you're, and you're leaking your funds. There's some sort of like, and so if you're, I don't know if you're the kind of person that has like, I don't know how you're getting affected by the economics of everything going on, but that could be a highlight here with that Mars and Pisces stuff. Um, and fifth house is really about whether that has to do with kids. That's another thing you feel like, I mean, if you're a parent, the Aquarius parent, you know, it could be that stuff to do with your kids is demanding a lot of money. And it's sort of like, how do you care for your kids with all the shit going on? You know, that could be one thing or it could also have to do with your own creative projects and whether you've got the funds to keep your own creative projects going, you know, that could be another thing as well. Um, and it sort of culminates with a, hold on, a, the buildup is in Gemini there and the actual solstice eclipse thing happens in Cancer, which is the sixth, the sixth house. Sixth house has to do with a lot of grunt work, a lot of manual work, and it could be that you kind of are running short on money or something, and then you have to do some, um, you have to get down and dirty and do the the dirty work or something, whether however that works out, right? Like it could be, or all again another similar to like Aquarius to Capricorn. Make sure you're doing the self care so that you know. Or that if the whatever the stress is around, if there's stress around money, stress around kids, that you're taking the self care, that you're not driving yourself over the hill or whatever, trying to be the provider or something like this. You have to like provide for yourself so you're not burning yourself out, right? That's another one here. Um, uh, and I think one thing that's cool about this is that so if you were, if you're uh, Aquarius rising, you've had these eclipses happening in the 12th house and 6th house recently, and what we're having right now is the, the nodes moving to Gemini and Sagittarius, so the emphasis of the realization of some of these creative potentials are going to be a focus of the next couple of years. So it might actually be a kind of a turnaround somehow that like you may actually be able to like realize more of your vision within the next year or two. Um, but it's sort of like right now you're kind of hitting a kind of uh, uh, critical kind of it, things might not be coming together, but then it starts opening up this chapter where you're going to be addressing issues around uh, your own creative vision and manifesting it, or if you're, it could also be, you know, more traditionally speaking from the point of view of parents, it could have to do with the parenting of your children and, you know, the supports that they need or whatever, you know, that, there's different ways to look at it. Um, but that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at for Aquarius right now. Um, so I'm going to look at a, a tarot card for Aquarius. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, this guy. Well, you know, what are you going to do, man? You're just staring out from your little castle rooftop wanting to conquer things, right? You know, it might not be the best time for it. <laughs> um, like, um, you know, and it's also like kind of looking out at a world, you know, run amok. And there's a certain desire potential here in this card because this is sort of like, this is a man, 
he's got the globe in his hands and is looking for you know looking for some kind of adventure or conquest or something like that um and i think it's important that you're um i don't know like is it self-centered motivations with a card like this right is it like are you just working for your own gains so that you can survive and beat all the other people in this sort of like post-apocalyptic survival narrative or are you going to be working more collaboratively and cooperatively with people you know um those are certain things that to take in consideration with a card like this coming up um well i keep hitting the wrong thing here sorry about that um it also has to do it's like an aries card that one and if you look at aries here aries is the third house so could be a hint towards something to do with um, neighborhood siblings, stuff like that. After Mars is out of Pisces, it's going to spend six months in Aries, right? So it could be kind of like, could be kind of sibling rivalry maybe coming up or like a kind of competitiveness in the neighborhood or something. Who knows? You have to fill in the blanks. I'm just trying to get some signs here, basically. Now, I'm going to just move, keep going and move on to Pisces. This will be the final one here. Whoops, don't go a whole month ahead. Pisces. <sighs> well, so Pisces, you're... It, you got Mars in the first year, for one thing. It, and that's squaring the fourth house. So there could be something to do with your living circumstances, with your lockdown. Is the actual place you're living supportive? And then if not, what kind of changes need to be made? Could be part of the um, the emphasis there. Um, and like I think the main thing with <laughs> with this kind of stuff, it's like if you are. It kind of brings me back to the whole thing about the coronavirus lockdown. I know things are opening up, but there's some sort of question around the rates of infection and that kind of thing. Um, but after, you know, if, if you're the kind of person who's been getting through lockdown for the last couple months or whatever, I think it's time to maybe look at some of our coping, coping mechanisms in lockdown. And I mean, especially with like, you know, Mars, Neptune in the first house, it's like, is it just, are we just getting like day drunk and a total mess from trying to deal with all the stress and not dealing with the stress well? Um, that is something I think for water signs, our, our coping mechanisms around our emotions are important things to look at. And um how we are in relationship to our home life and that kind of thing is going to be an emphasis for Pisces. And that kind of leads up basically into the eclipse taking place into uh, Cancer. Sorry, I'm kind of messing this up here. The, the pressure around the home life thing between Pisces and Gemini then sort of leads into a culmination in the fifth now, whether that, again, could have something to do with kids, maybe, right? If you're a parent, Pisces parents, or it could also have something to do with the creative projects or something like that if you're a creative type. Um, and I think ultimately the whole thing, it's a good things of like, you know, our, Pisces tends to be very artistic. So it could have things to do with if you have like a home studio or if there's something about your home life that if you're writing at home or working at home, how your relations, your home dynamics is supportive of what your creative life is about, basically, what you're manifesting, what you're creating with your work. And now, to finish it off, I'm going to do a final a final pull for Pisces. And it's, oh my god, it's the death card. Well, you know, it could be the death card does not mean you're going to die. Um, but the, again, we're doing an eclipse, eclipse reading here. 
And so it could be a major transition moment. Um, the, the, the ultimate message with the death card is that things are impermanent and changing and it may be, there may be scary and, or it might be even be just, you know, just disappointing or there might be some grief that we have to process, but ultimately uh, change is the one thing you can be sure of in life. And, uh, you know, and that changes the changes that come that we don't have any control over, and and facing the fears around that can be one of the biggest teachers. Um, and well, how that applies to the astrology I'm doing, you know, I'll just leave that open to interpretation. Maybe the the Gemini fourth house home life might have a situ have a factor. Maybe some some of the more creative Cancer stuff may be a factor, or maybe it's the taking a look at our coping meth mechanisms and our our self-care habits maybe that's something where we need we're having a big detox moment around or something like this right that death could also be seen as the, the the detoxing of the of cleansing out the crap in some way right as another way to look at it um but i'm just leaving it open for interpretation uh this is the end of my video thank you very much for joining me I hope you have a nice day and I hope we, we get through this eclipse season without too many, without being <laughs> too terrible. Um, uh, so best wishes to all of you out there. Thank you very much.